Hi, my name is Hillary. I'm a senior at Harvard College, and I'm also a member of HSS. Um, and I'm really sorry to go after James. I don't think mine is nearly that entertaining. So my question comes from the fact that many people cite as one of the most positive aspects of their religion this spiritual support that they get from their faith, uh, particularly in times of hardship. Um, after seeing your documentary, The Secret Life of a Manic Depressive, I thought that maybe this point is particularly relevant to you. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak to um, the ways in which your humanism may have impacted or have been impacted by um, living with the, you know, the day-to-day -day symptoms of your bipolar disorder. Yeah. That's a very interesting question. I think, um, I think we're all familiar with the idea of deathbed conversions. We're all familiar with the idea of turning to religion when in, in misery. And, um, you know, a lot of religious people will say, ha, you wait till you're in an aeroplane that is you know, spiraling down through the clouds and, uh, the, you know, there's one engine out. I bet your hands go together and you say, please God, please God, please God. Um, and, of course, who, who, which of us can answer whether or not we will say such a thing? But what that proves, I don't know. It proves we're scared. But it's also probably true that we will evacuate our bowels. That doesn't actually say anything else other than the fact we're scared too. But when it comes to... Um, when it comes to the general misery and misfortune of the world, whether it's, it's poverty, whether it's, um, uh, whether it's illness, and in my case, as you say, I, you know, I have, as, uh, um, as many do, it seems, I, I, I have this, this condition, this chronic condition called bipolar disorder, which means that I have mood swings, or, um, and I'm sometimes extremely cheerful possibly too cheerful for my own good and certainly for the comfort and, and satisfaction of others. And, and other times I just want to, to pull, the, pull the sheets of the world over me and disappear into the dark um, and, and I'm in misery and despair. And, and I'm sure there are many in this room who, who, who know that and can respond to that and, and many may have it far worse. And if you don't yourselves, you'll know someone uh, who has that. Um, it's a, it's, it's long been a, a, a problem, the, the stigma to, 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 to which mental illness of all kinds is, uh, is victim. And, um, and it's one of the pleasures, I suppose, of having a, uh, a public life which is, uh, you know, uh, successful enough in television to allow me to pick my own subject, that I was able to, 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 to make a couple of films about, uh, about it was called The Secret Life of, of the Manic Depressive. Um, and... I've always regarded it. It's an interesting condition in as much as it involves the mind, but I think not the personality. Um, most, most psychiatrists, most, most experts in the field would describe it, characterize it as a, as a mood disorder, not a personality disorder. Um, it may seem like a rather casuistic distinction, but I think it's a real one. And I regard it as being like the weather, essentially. Um, if, if the weather is really miserable, if it's pouring with rain and it's very grey and very cold, your saying that it isn't grey and cold and wet isn't going to alter it. It's not, you can't talk the weather away. You can't deny it. On the other hand, saying, oh my God, it's raining and it's grey, that means the sun will never shine, is absurd too. You, you, you sort of accept the weather, you grumble at it, you moan at it, but you kind of know and trust that it may be in a week, it may be that afternoon, the sun will come out and things will be better. In other words, you know that it's not your fault, that it's something external to you, that is absolutely real. It's absurd to pretend that it isn't raining, but also it's absurd to blame yourself for the fact that it's raining, or to assume that it will always rain. And those are things that are sort of practical and honest. And, and I would think that any sort of religious interpretation of them would really get in the way of helping. And now I'm, I'm, I'm not dismissing somebody who may say, well, actually, I was, I was made happier and made able to live with my bipolar disorder because of what my priest told me or what my pastor told me or what my rabbi told me. It is possible, I'm, perhaps. But as far as I'm concerned, the more rational I am about it, hard as it can be, the, 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 better, the better for me. You know, the most dangerous thing I can be, as it were, is to be overladen with a sense of its importance. I, you have to try and remember that it is not that different from asthma or diabetes. It's a chronic condition. 
It's absolutely real. It won't go away. There are not really any cures for it. There are some reasonable treatments that can make you a little bit better, but it will keep coming back. You've just got to find a way to live with it. It so happens I can quote now a primate. I don't mean by that um, a higher ape, although I do, because he was a human being. Um, so he was a primate in two, two senses. It's, a, it's, it's an office in the Church of England, the, what you would call the Episcopalian Church. He was the, he was the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, and religious people have been known to say very wise things. And this particular one, Ramsey, his name was, was the Archbishop of Canterbury in my childhood. And he had huge white eyebrows. Um, and, and, and a rather sort of splendid, I remember my mother was used to say, it's hard to believe he's exactly the same age as Cary Grant. Um, but, but he was the same age as Cary Grant, and this was around the time Cary Grant was making charade, you know, and still being a sort of, a kind of juve lead with Audrey Hepburn. And um, um, anyway, I remember seeing him being interviewed, and, uh, and the interviewer said, well now, Your Grace, which is how you, you, you address uh, primates of the Church of England, he said, well, well, well now, Your Grace, um, you, you're said to be very wise. And he said, am I, am, I, am I said to be wise? Am I really? Am I wise? I... He said, well, um, uh, uh, do you think you're wise? Oh, I wonder, I wonder, am I wise? I don't know. Um, he said, well, what would you say wisdom is, Your Grace? He said, oh, wisdom. Well, I think, I think it's the ability to cope. And I thought that was a really supreme answer, actually. Wisdom is the ability to cope. It's not knowing things. You certainly can be wise and have no education whatsoever, and you can be an absolute fool, as far as wisdom is concerned, and be the most educated person you know. Wisdom is clearly something, something to do with being able to handle life, and the ability to cope is a good way of putting it. And it may be that this Archbishop of Canterbury um, was because it was, after all, he was the Church of England, so he's really not that religious. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it was just a kind of sort of club you joined if you were a certain class of person, um, and there were occasionally things you had to get through. It just reminds me, I, I, for a second, I, I remember thinking for a time when I was a teenager that I would make a fantastic bishop. And, and, I, and then I, I read, and it, it made me blush so much, I, I read Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and if you know that novel, and know these couple of the Crawfords who are absolutely wicked, uh, and, and they're charming, but wicked. And there's, there's a long speech that uh, Henry Crawford, I think he's called, makes, somewhere, in which he says about how he should have gone into the church and what a marvelous, um, what a marvelous, and what great sermons uh, he, he would have written. And, uh, and you know perfectly well he has no faith whatsoever. Uh, and, and I saw myself in this character. I thought, damn, damn, I mean, I would have made a really good bishop. I promise you, I would have been fantastic. I would have made fantastic sermons, but I wouldn't quite have believed them. And, and I suppose for all the... Um, for all the faults of many of the prelates and bishops of the world, um, at least we can credit a lot of them with believing what they say. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, there aren't, you know, we mustn't, we mustn't divide the world into good, all humanists, atheists, and possibly agnostics, and bad, all people who believe in God or even work for the church or, or, or are rabbis. You know, there are, there, are good in, there are good in all. I think we recognize what's wicked, I think we recognize the, the intolerance, the bigotry, the hatred, the determination, the almost hysterical need to, to, to recruit. I think we recognize that as, as being the real enemy. Anyway, thank you for your question. Yeah.